the Chick-fil-A thing was about the funniest thing I've seen in a long with the, while. With the rioters the burning The guy the walking around burning in Chick-fil-A. <laughs> There's a fourth one there we see amidst a, oh, them. Yeah. It's the ghost of Truett Cathy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. That was just killer, mm, that uh, was so, funny. so to speak. Hey, I'm sorry about your grandfather. Thanks, Pastor. Yeah, he was... Um, Man, what a great... He was saved last year? Last year, yeah. At my, 98, 99? My dad went and... Because my dad it went It was your dad's there. dad? My mom's dad. But my but they lived next door. Yeah. And so my dad became like an, like another son another son to him, just over the, the years and years living next to him. And dad shared with him all the time, and I think it was just that faithful relationship. Because Pop, uh, he, he had been frustrated by the by some some like missionaries really early in his life yeah. he always thought but my granddaddy too my granddaddy had no time for doctors or preachers hmm. that's none wow. no I mean zip not a nun no time for him and yet your father your own father was it your father was always he was a layman in the church though right yeah he spoke a great deal yeah oh he, he, yeah he did he spoke in a lot of churches he started the Gideon camp in my hometown. Spoke a lot. Uh, spoke all over the place for the Gideons and uh, taught Sunday school for fifty-three years. My dad, at one time, he had the most unusual knack for ministering to alcoholics. At one time, he had over twenty recovered alcoholics in his Sunday school class. I, I remember vividly getting hearing the phone ring in the night and my daddy answering and saying, "I'll go get him." Talking to a mm. wife, saying my husband's out somewhere drunk. Would mm. you? And my daddy saying, "I'll go get him." You know. Um, had a, I, I don't know. It was, it was an unusual gift, but I'm telling you, he was gifted in that and and counseling. That's really interesting. To hear. It, it is. It, it, as I look back on it, it's even more. It just, you know. You'd have to compare some notes with 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 my dad because that's that's some that's like an interesting thing that's come up and ministry to alcoholics specifically mm -hmm. and 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 recovered addicts in 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 their church and he said it's like changed the culture of their church in this beautiful way well we live in a time where uh, i don't know what what addiction was like 50 years ago it's or 100 different. years ago but you know we live in a time where addiction is out front on the on the front store shelf you know it's just there and so many people are addicted to so many different things and well it's normalized it's like encouraged in some ways it, it, you're right now it like is. you're not allowed to criticize pe people if they are addicted to something yeah. like oh well that's just that's just their choice and you and you can't say anything or like how dare you you know say anything wrong yeah, about like this there, thing they're there doing there is a themselves. better way to live your life you know, there is a more meaningful way. There is help for you. There is hope for you. No, no, tell them that. Make them feel hopeful in the midst of their despair. You know, <laughs> your despair is is your. Hope. I don't know. It's well. That's what I keep telling. I'm sure you've seen me like on Sunday mornings, like in between songs. That's I I I I'm literally saying the same thing every week, which is just there. There is hope. Mm -hmm. We're singing about mm -hmm. a hope. The hope is Jesus Christ, in the midst of a world. That because because pastor like the whole week they're going through the week, and unless they're being really really intentional about the things that they're seeing and hearing and studying, the world around them is just telling them there is no hope. Mm -hmm. The country is literally burning. Like you look at the wildfires and that sort of thing, the country is falling apart. So your life is is going to fall apart. There's mm -hmm. no hope. You know, have fear. Yeah, I I don't know. And then they walk that, in. That's pure. You know, we've been doing this, going through this thing on on evangelism as a staff. Yeah. And the whole the whole premise of atheism is basically that there is no hope. I you exactly. have no hope. You know, you have no hope. It's despair. The world is rotten. Everybody else is rotten. Everybody else is you know. Well, and I, I've got a couple of I've got a couple of atheist friends, and and those and those are the questions that, I, and usually the conversation kind of falls apart pretty quickly and subject changed or whatever but that's that's the question I want to ask is like well where are you finding hope like where are you finding the will to live if you don't believe in a higher power if you don't believe in an objective morality if you don't believe in an ultimate 
destiny. That's one of the things that they were talking about in the in the yeah. Robin Zach yeah. Christ. And they, well, they have no answer for it. In all, in all honesty, I've got to admit that there is no purpose to life. There is no meaning. Uh, there is, you know, regardless of what you achieve or what you do in this life, it's, it's just, you know, by chance, and you die, and that's it. Well, Boy, you talk about despair. Now, that's despair. That's nihilistic, right? It's just we're all going to, to nothing. That's actually what my grandfather believed. I would always ask him, like, what happens after this? Yeah. He's like, we came from nothing, we're going to nothing, and I don't want to talk you about You know, that's kind of like Nietzsche. Nietzsche, that great yes. brain who... Uh, basically gave Hitler the idea of the Superman, the Aryan right. Superman. And here's Nietzsche who, you know, after all of his fame and after all of his writing and after all of his teaching is curled up in a fetal position, sucking his thumb, calling his mama before he dies. What despair. Yeah. Hey, you know, what just utter despair. Why would you want to end up But like there that? is a happy ending. There is a happy ending. There is a happy ending. Well, before we get into the, ma- I, I wanted to ask you. This I am assuming that we've been on all this time. Yeah, the whole the whole time, the whole okay. time, especially about the sucking the thumb thing. That was good. Yeah, you, we're going to keep that. Well, okay, it's good. true. I, it is. He was in a mental hospital, and you know, sad. I say that with no glee or no happiness about it, but what utter despair. It's like the guy who came into who was it. He was an atheist. It, was a, it may have been Ingersoll who came in uh, to a, a friend's study, and he had this globe on his desk. Okay. And he said, oh, I love this. He said, this is just, it was, you know, it was really nice. It was hand caught, all this kind of He said, where did you get this? I want one of those. He said, it just appeared. It, <laughs> it, it was just there. <laughs> Is that the end of the story? Yeah. Oh, you you know, just, that's it. It just, it just came it's out there. of nothing. It's there. Just came out of nothing. You know. Perfectly designed. Well, I want one of these globes. Where'd you get it? Well, somebody made it. Well, it's interesting to me that, like, we're, the Ravi Zacharias thing that we've been saying, gl- I love that you mentioned that in the message yesterday. We've been studying this thing as a staff. It's this series of messages on how to share the gospel, but it's a huge amount of time has been devoted to breaking down atheism. Yeah. Yeah. Which, when I was coming up as a uh, you know student in the church, so much when we would study other religions, it was always Jehovah's Witness, Mormonism, Islam, yeah. um, you know, even Catholicism, that sort of thing. But these days, it seems like it's w- the fad. Atheism's the fad. It's right now? fad right now. It's the end thing. It'll shift. It'll be something else. I guess that's you say. You see the same things in the church, Kirk. When you get to be as old as I am, and you are very you, old, I am. The ancient of days. Aged. Right? You know. So here, it, when you get to that point in life, you will discover, you'll watch them. It, it even runs through the church. There are these, these fads that will run through a, run through a church, yeah. that will run through the denomination, that will run through a congregation. You just start to see it. You see the way that, that it's just it's cyclic, right? It's yeah, you cyclic. go back to what Paul said, what I preached on yesterday a week ago which was, you know, you remain sober. That's what he tells Timothy. You stay sober, which means don't run off after this thing comes up, this thing comes up. Everybody wants to run off off of the latest, you know, hoorah out there thinking this this is going to, I don't know what they think it's going to do. But what you've got to do is you've got to stay right there and plow that row that God's called you to plow. Well, I'm glad that that's and and you spoke about that some yesterday, and I, I'm I'm I felt like you were upfront with the fact that like we're not doing the days ahead, mm-hmm. so that you can tr- you can try to look at everything with the riots and the burning and the political atmosphere and all this stuff, yeah. and say like, and that's coming this fall. Yeah. Instead, it's almost like you, you toyed with the expectation a little bit and said like, no, this is actually an encouragement. Mm-hmm. It's not so much about the right now and trying to pick a calendar date. I mean, that's what Christ even says here in Acts chapter one, but the, the, um, but it, it's, it's about just a understanding a more global mm-hmm. understanding of what is to come. And I know we're going to get, to yeah, you know, um, I'm going to talk about that more this Sunday because the whole concept in second and first Thessalonians four around this idea of a rapture is encouragement. 
Oh, for sure. He says that multiple and I'm, times. And I'm going to show you that as we work through the text. You're going to see a recurring Greek word that comes back. It, it flows like an underground channel underneath the text. It just kind of goes there. Yeah. And it's the whole thing that Paul is saying in this. Um, I say this for your encouragement. This, you know, encourage one another with this. The Lord's coming. Well, and how <laughs> it, that's almost countercultural a little, a little bit to um, even even some of our uh, Baptist or fundamentalist roots. If you go back, because every ser- every sermon about the end times was always like fire and brimstone. You know, go back to Jonathan Edwards. You, the you're a sinner in the hands of the angry God, yeah, and yeah. so this is a, it's really a different a different look. Obviously, a very textual look at it. I but. hope so. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things that you say. You're just just the hold up, like, "Hey guys, like for anyone not paying attention, yeah, this it's is right just there. The Bible. It's yeah. I'm just, I'm just reading what it, it said you. right there. Thus saith the yeah. Lord. Well, let's talk a little bit about this Acts, this Acts chapter one. It's okay. it's interesting to me in general because you start. I I I'll um I was uh, I was holding one of my kids and I missed it. I I went to the the last chapter of Luke because you kept talking about Luke. Mm. And uh, and then I I only realized later that when you're talking about Luke, you know Saint Luke, yeah, obviously is the uh, the author of Acts as well. But it's interesting the way those two things dovetail. Well, you know Luke ends his gospel chapter 24, and he led them out as far as Bethany, lifted up his hands and blessed them. I wanted to kind of go into this because there's great debate among some theologians, not many people, but some theologians that, oh, there's a discrepancy here. Luke said this happened immediately, you know, after the resurrection, and yet over here he says it's 40 days. Now, that's, where, that's where you wonder if some of these theologians just, you wonder. Um, <laughs> They're deconstructing it's, it's obviously what he's doing is he's just wrapping up the gospel. Um, it. it He's got a different intent here than he does over in Acts chapter 1. So he just comes to their, he's wrapping the whole thing up. He makes these appearances, these other appearances. Then there's the ascension, the end of the gospel. You know, while he was blessing them, he departed from them and was carried up to heaven. And uh, they, after worship, now this is a sermon in itself right here. Watch this. Verse 52, 53 of Luke 24. And they, those that were there, who saw the ascension after worshiping him returned to Jerusalem with great complaining, <laughs> moaning and groaning with Pastor, great joy. That, there it is. And were continually in the temple praising God. That, they that, took joy that, from the that. The whole part of worship is to express your joy in the kingship of Jesus Christ. We need to start one of the services with that. Just that, is a, that is an incredible, and it, all you've got to do is read that and see. That's a perfect way for this guy to wrap up his gospel right there. It should bring joy. All yes, should bring everything joy. about the life of Christ should bring you joy, it should lead you into worship, and that worship is the expression, expression of great joy and praising God. Well, and we I saw that as I was preparing the benediction yesterday, the the book of Revelation ends the exact same way. Yeah. I mean, it's well, yeah. it's similar in that like hey, it's grace and peace be with you all. Yeah. Like obviously there's there's big things to come, even frightful things, but uh grace and peace ultimately is where you need to land. Well, that that becomes the the attitude of the Christian in days like we're living in. Hmm. No nobody likes to hurt or struggle or go through tough times or to be locked in for months yeah. on it. Nobody likes that. But the fact not. of the matter is we do have a happy ending. Yeah, this Life is not going to be like this forever. Well, and it seems like the early believers, they understood that immediately. Like Even though it wasn't the end for mm-hmm. them, they, they were expectant of that. And, yeah, pa- Pastor, like, it's, it's funny, like pe- – Going back to what you were saying with regards to the textual criticism, mm-hmm. right? I, I get so frustrated when people are like, well, this doesn't line up exactly with that, or you can sort of poke a hole here. And I'm just like, you know, I feel like the church would have poked those holes mm-hmm. before they, you know, canonized it, put it in the Bible, and yeah. we said it was yeah. good for over a thousand years. But people yeah. want to keep the, the old chronological snobbery. 
always is so frustrating to well, me. Well, it's kind of funny. I, I don't pay it a whole lot of attention, like who wrote the book, you know, did Luke really write Acts? Was that did he have a misunderstanding? <laughs> You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I, when it really is not that difficult. I think you're a wiser man than me. They, they want to make theology out to be difficult. It's not. Love God, love your neighbor. That's it. How simple. What, why are you guys even watching this? Just, yeah, go, just, really. just, just go and do that go, stuff. Go and do likewise. But if you want to keep watching, so I, I wanted you to, there were two things in that, in that first chapter, that uh, first chapter of Acts that, that really, really grabbed me. And, and the, the, the first one is, um, and I and and you you beat this one into us uh, in in verse eight, obviously one eight. Mm-hmm. Um, be, I I didn't I didn't remember how that. I'm not looking at the right spot in my Bible here. Yeah, yeah. So he's I I didn't remember the context of that verse because mm-hmm. he always says you'll receive power and the Holy Spirit comes by you will be my witnesses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We we quote that all the time, especially in context of missions. But the fact that he says that in response. To them to the saying, question. to the yeah. question. Yeah, are you going to restore? And I tried to show everybody that that was a logical question for them to ask. I love that. It, that made, it made sense to them. In their mind, they're trying to put the pieces together and say, okay, here we are. We're on the Mount of Olives. He's just told us we're going to be, you know, we're going right. to receive the Holy Spirit. We're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I, I'm putting these pieces together. Now, this must be what you're about to do. And, and he says, no, 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 no. You let me handle that stuff. You handle the one thing I'm leaving you, and that is be a witness. And that is such an important, I would see, you know, even just, I, I saw a link come up on YouTube today, and it was this guy going for 40 minutes about how this year's Feast of Trumpets is going to be the return of the Lord. I know. And I'm like. I, you know what? I came across that thing, too. Oh, did you really? Yeah, must somebody kind of said fire. that Christ is coming back during the days of all of well, and 2020. It ha- and it happens every year. I, I guess they figure I got to be right sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. It's then just... they'll just delete. After the rapture, they go back and delete all their other videos. Yeah. And as they're deleting the videos, they're like, this was the one that was right. And Nobody like, will ever guess this. Nobody will ever get it right. Because if they did, we would have to listen to them for all of eternity say, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's, that doesn't sound like the eternity that I want to be no, a part no, of. No, 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 no. But the point that you were making, and it's it's an important point, is that Jesus himself says, you worry, like, that's not to worry about. I'm going to take care of that. Here is your task. You be a witness. And it was funny. You talked about how, like, they heard that. They heard him say where and how they're supposed to be a witness, but it wasn't until the stoning of Stephen before yeah, they Yeah, for the outside. next eight years, they just sit right there. They do nothing. Is Does it that really not nothing? sound like the church? I didn't read. Is it? Do they really do nothing? Yes, I didn't read it for all the, the next, way back. They stay right there in Jerusalem. I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, they stay right there in Jerusalem. They don't do anything. Was that all disobedience? Do you, I mean, it's, well, it, obviously, there was I don't some think good it was disobedience with a high hand. It was disobedient on a dumb behind. It was. <laughs> they just sat there. They didn't do anything. One of those sins of omission. Yeah. The sins they of stayed there, and they did not leave until they put Stephen to death. And I, you know, I'm always want to say, a good deacon killing will always get the church up and moving. Well, and it's <laughs> something will happen. You know, whether it be a good or a bad movement, I'm not sure. But okay, well, well they get some out. They move out. They yeah. get into Samaria. Of course, it was not God's will that Stephen. You know, that was not God's. Yeah, that's perfect right. will. It was God's permissive will. Certainly. But God used that to move the church out. Well, and what's interesting, I, I couldn't help but think of this. I don't think that you mentioned it, but like it, it just it would almost logically follow where where God is, you know, obviously is has willed this whole situation. The church is not moving. So then who does he grab right after the stoning of Stephen? He grabs Paul, yeah, convert, he gets Saul, right. converts him. Yeah. You will be my chosen instrument to take yeah. the gospel beyond. The number one enemy of, you know, it's kind of a Chuck Colson story. Oh, that, if you tell, know the tell life the of a that Chuck, story. Yeah, you know, that's so interesting. Well, I mean, he was special counsel to the president, Nixon. Richard Nixon. Right. You know, and was up eyeball deep into all the stuff that Nixon was doing. He was a powerful man. He was a powerful man. He was an ex-Marine. He, you know, he wielded tremendous power. I mean, he had unfettered access in and out of the president's office, life, home quarters, everything else. But he became corrupted. Corrupted, you know, I'm out after 
everything in life and mm-hmm. discovers that getting everything in life just isn't enough. It's not enough. It doesn't satisfy. Amen to that. In prison comes to Christ. And now he's written all these amazing uh, books about like worldview and how we as yeah, Christians yeah, are to live, that yeah. sort of thing. So, yeah. I mean, that's kind of Paul's, you know, very powerful man, very influential. Sure, yeah. And then he comes, and not, not just influential, but like uses his influence to persecute and kill the Christians. Like yep. that's, uh, yep. that's. He a- was the fair haired boy of Judaism. I mean, they saw him as the up and coming star. You know, I don't know who that, I don't know who I'd compare that to today, but he was the up and coming star of Judaism. I mean, they, they were tagging their hopes on this guy named Saul of Tarsus. They studied under Gamaliel, is that how you pronounce it? Brilliant, you know, yeah. guy. Yeah. You, did you see that movie about Paul? It was like a couple I of years ago. I did not. Ago. I feel like I talked about it before. You did. Did, did you any of you guys see it? Man. It's and I have not seen it, and I, I would like to watch that. Well, I, I, um, man, I remember that ending, like, totally moving me so much. But anyway, I'm, I'm getting off track. The other thing that I wanted to talk about in Acts chapter 1 is the fact that those, because this, this point is, is huge that you made with regards to the fact that there's, these angels, these messengers of God mm-hmm. at all of these different checkpoints mm-hmm. in Jesus' mm-hmm. life, yeah. except for one. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, the, and obviously that, the, the one being the cross, but like it's, it's just so interesting to think about that maybe these two guys dressed in white are the same two that were also there uh, when the stone well, was Well, you wonder, away. two men in white clothing, well, I know I've read that before, that's back in the Gospels where these two angels brilliantly and, you know, shone brilliantly in white clothing they were there at the empty tomb. Makes you wonder, are these the same two? I don't know. Have you ever stopped to think about the fact that for thousands of years, as we account time, angels spent standing around the throne where Christ was? And I for, them, about- for them to watch the crucifixion of Christ, wh- you know, I, I assume that angels have emotions. You know, I guess they would. Uh, uh, what it would have been like to have stood back and watched the one that you have worshipped up until that point in time on a cross. Well, and been tasked with even protecting and ministering to. Yeah, you know, because Jesus makes the comment, if if I... I have but to say a word, yeah, legions and of angels. they'd come. They're here. You know, we'll destroy the world. They'd come and take over. But that was part of their continued submission to his yeah, will. To that, that's him. the other part of it. Think of how submissive they were, how obedient they were to the will of God. And then think about how uh, such a bull in the china shop Peter was with a sword, and here comes all these guards of the high priest, and he's going to jump out there with a sword, one guy, and he's going to take them all on. Well, that's part of the mystery to me. Like you think about the, the power and submissiveness and, and majesty of angels, and yet we're, we're appointed to rule over them. We will be, yeah. You will not be an angel when you die. Ooh, that's but getting more intense. But so. one, one day you will rule over angels. You will sit in judgment over angels. I, I, love, that, I love that whole thing by C.S. Lewis it, where he says, you as a Christian have never met just a mere mortal Christian. I think about that all the time. But if you could see that person sitting next to you in church, as they will be Mm. in the resurrection, (laughs) it would absolutely terrify you to death. (laughs) (laughs) Well, does he say just mere mortal Christian? I thought it was just mere mortal in general. Because obviously, I mean, there's an eternal death, but there's, I mean, it's still... So that that's the thing that convicts me. Yeah. With if we're if we're to be his witnesses, mm-hmm. like my the, my neighbor across the street mm-hmm. is an eternal soul. That's that's right. That's another thought. You know, all I could think about. And then as everybody I, you meet will live for eternity, but they're not going to live for eternity in heaven. They're going to be in eternity, however. And I thought about that uh, really every time that I that I talked to my grandfather, the the, the one that just passed away, because I was like. I mean, when you get north of 90, I mean, you, even he was just like, he didn't know if, if it would be his last conversation with me every time. Yeah. You know, I'm living hundreds of miles away. And so every time we talk, that would be kind of like, well, if I don't see you again, and I'd be like, well, if I don't see you again, Pop, like, 
just want you to know I'm praying for you to come to Christ. I pray that all the time. And eventually he did. That's great. The Lord's faithfulness. Yeah. But I want us to keep praying. I know that you're going to lead us in this, Pastor, because we've got the 10 days of prayer coming up, too. Mm-hmm. But, like, I want us to keep praying that we're going to see that kind of just conversion of our the community around us, like yeah, people I, coming back to Christ. I pray that, too. I think some of that is happening. Really? We're see- well, we're seeing people show up here I've never seen before. That's definitely true. And showing up in some numbers, you know. People really- We had tremendous... I, I was blown away with the crowd yesterday. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was just, I, it just moved me to tears just watching people worship and just enjoying being back together. And, um, and I, I believe that that's going to continue. And I, I, you know, as I continue to pray, because I said a little bit more of a sobering note, but like you said, we're supposed to be sober minded. Not everybody that's listening and attending and experiencing these services is saved. No, they're not. Now, I can't determine that. Of course but not. you just know that not everybody who comes has made that decision to trust Christ. So I'm just begging that more people would make that decision. Yeah, and I am too. So that's what we're praying out there, you guys. You got, you got any last words for you know, the people? This you has think? been a serious Monday. It has been kind of. You want, us to, you want to read a few more Babylon B headlines to finish, <laughs> no. finish things up here? No, no it's no, been a good day. I'm, I'm teaching today, so I'm all... Oh yeah. Well, you look. You, I thought you were just dressing up for this calendar meeting. I did we're about it just for you. To. Yeah, for the calendar meeting. I dressed up. For that. I even tucked in my shirt. I'm going to the calendar meeting. You know, I'm gonna need to be. I'm actually just trying to like make <laughs> my clothes as tight as possible so that I can fall asleep while still just sitting up. You know what I mean? Y'all have a good week. God bless. Love you guys. See you soon.